people have made in the 60s. You know, they used to call it the mushroom drink. And, <laughs> you know, um, like I said, it's funny. We get a lot of customers that come in, they, uh, older, custom, older um, uh, you know, uh, people that are uh, of, of middle age or older, and they look at, you know, what we've done and they're like man i remember my uncle used to make this stuff you know when <laughs> when he was you know growing up or you know my grandfather used to drink this or whatever so it's pretty cool yeah 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 and um you've been making it for quite a while even before yeah the business right so how did you start making it yeah i started uh i went through a health change and i started eating different and drinking different and kombucha was one of the things that i used to buy off the shelf all the time okay um, I started making it on my own uh, just because I've always always been kind of a culinary kind of person. Um, <clears throat> basically, you know, love to cook, uh, love to make things, create things. And so I started making kombucha um, just for my own consumption. And then I started to share it with my, my family. And, um, and, you know, as they began to accept it, um, I, I started to uh, get serious about uh, looking more into a way of, um, I guess, helping people, you know, because I was like, man, if this can help me, I'm sure this can help other people, yeah. you know, in some kind of a way. So, um, yeah, I started sharing this uh, with friends. Um, of course, before I started to share, I, I wanted to make sure that everything was tested because, you know, again, this is live bacteria. Um, you know, you can get sick. If you're not making it right, mm. um, there's been claims uh, different people getting sick really? from making kombucha, and so you really have to know what you're doing when mm. you're playing with, uh, you know, this type of drink. And that's anything that's you know, of course you're making or brewing or whatever. Yeah. But um, my results came back, and the the chemist, uh, I, I end up sending my results um, or my tests. Uh, information to a, a commercial company in Oregon and I picked Oregon because you know Oregon at the time to me was kind of the the kombucha scene it seems like they're the yeah the crowd for it yeah you know, and kind of hipster <laughs> exactly and so uh go to find out this company I sent it to they work with a lot of different commercial brands and and so I never heard anything back I didn't really care I just mm. was more of just wanting to uh, see if they would accept the the test sample, you know, and I got a call from the actual chemist, and uh, I never forget it. I I was um, I think I was driving somewhere, and she goes, "Hey," she goes, uh, um, "How long have you been doing this?" And I said, "Oh, probably for about a couple of months or a year or so." And she goes, "Man," she goes, "I like your results." She goes, "I've never seen results this good." She goes, "You're right, right on the." You know, with the, with the big guys, you know. She, Holy smokes. Yeah. And uh, she goes, hey, whatever you're doing, keep doing it, you know. And so she sent me a certificate of completion. Whoa. And it had all my test results and kind of make you feel like, all right, I'm certified, you know. Yeah. And so uh, I felt real confident about it. And so I started sharing with the public. I uh, had a friend uh, who ran the uh, Stillaguamish Athletic Club. She was the manager there. And uh, she invited me to come out. Um, to the gym and talk to the, the, the different people there about kombucha and how, you know, basically it could help the body. And, and she was one of my, of course, uh, first clients. I mean, she, you know, supported me 100%. Mm -hmm. And so from there, uh, it started to grow. I uh, started having people calling me saying, hey, can I get another bottle? Hey, can <laughs> I get a six pack? And before you know it, man, I'm you know, doing deals in the parking lot, you know, <laughs> beating people there and, you know, they're supporting me, you know, and, you know, I knew technically I'm like, hey, I can't really sell this stuff uh, because, you know, there's alcohol in it, there's you know, yeah, yeah. And so people just, you know, support it. They just say, hey, just, you know, take this, you know, this is yeah, for yeah. your time, this, that. And people pay for their bottles. They I mean, man, they, they did everything. And I'm, I mean, it went from 10 people to 20 to 30 to 40 to 60 people. And I couldn't keep up. And I, I kid you not, my, my kids are my witness. I had bottles in the kitchen lined up. And, um, and I mean, it was just, you know, the counter was filled um, almost every other night, you know, because I'm, you know, 
trying to fulfill orders. How do you make that much? Because in your home, right? That's yeah. where you're doing it? Yeah, it was in, in my home. Uh, I stored everything in my garage. And so, uh, yeah, it got to the point where um, I had to get, get rid of this stuff, like, right away, you know? And so uh, almost every day I was heading down to the gym. The gym was kind of like the, the, the drop-off spot. Got it, okay. Yeah, and so I would drop it off there, and, um, you know, people ask questions and call me or whatever the case may be, but uh, they needed a reorder, you know. Yeah. Yeah, so um, other than that... Um, I knew then I had something. I said, man, I, I can't stay like this. You know, I have to figure this out. And so um, I went on ahead and, you know, looked into licensing, um, looked around town for a facility. Uh, first thing I was trying to find was a commercial kitchen because you can, you can do this out of a commercial kitchen okay. and be able to operate. Um, but that was hard to find. And so uh, I said, well... I said, uh, I'm going to just try to get my garage license, you know, because I know some, you know, uh, breweries that operate out of their uh, garage. Right. Yeah. People make yeah. beer at their garage. Yeah. I've seen that before. So I submitted my paperwork. That didn't work out uh, because um, you have to be uh, within the county lines. You can't be within city limits. Okay. So, but if you're in county lines, you you know, you can, you know, basically open up a, a shack, yeah. you know, um, because it's all county. It's not anything to do with the actual city. And so, so yeah, I kind of came to a halt. I said, well, I got to stop this and this is, this is not going to work. <laughs> and so, uh, and so uh, the guy, one of my friends who was actually uh, doing my uh, photography and all my artwork, um, uh, he took a side, side gig job with um, Xfinity. And he was doing a work order on the east side in Bellevue. And he calls me up at 6 a.m. in the morning. And he goes, hey, give me a call as soon as possible. I got to talk to you. I just, I just ran into someone yesterday. And I think that this would be a good business fit for you. And so... I didn't call him back. <laughs> I, I think I waited like a couple of days or something like that. You thought he was kidding around or? <laughs> well, you know, I, and again, I'm just kind of like, uh, you know, whatever. Yeah. And so, uh, I say, Hey man, what's going on? He goes, you won't believe it, man. He said, but I met this lady. Um, it seemed like she has everything together that you can think of. I think you guys should talk. He said, here's her number. Just call her. Uh-huh. I said, okay. So I put it off for about a week. And then um, finally I said, well, you know, let me call this lady, see what she's talking about. And so uh, I called and uh, we were on the phone probably for about an hour and she was real interested in starting a kombucha company. Has been for years. Um, she drinks kombucha every day. Um, she, you know, basically kombucha was kind of like, she swears by it, like it's, it's made her more healthy you know and so uh she said can we meet and she goes you know i don't want to you know disturb anything that you have going with your business she said i just want to help any way i can and so um i said okay i'll meet i'll meet up with you <laughs> and so i end up driving out to bellevue we had a meeting and that meeting turned into a business partnership and so, uh, before you know it, we launched um, Majestic Enterprises LLC, which we put Glory Bucha under that umbrella and functioned everything as an as a LLC. And um, we went live with it. Um, she ended up becoming uh, my full investor. And um, she said, hey, um, what do you want to open this up at? I said, well, let's do Arlington. Perfect. <laughs> and she said, why Arlington? I said, well, I said, Arlington supported me from day one. I said, uh, I owe it to them, you know, to, to put this in, in, in uh, you know, in the town. And so uh, she said, okay, because her, her idea was Bellevue. Oh, right. Yeah. And so uh, Bellevue, you know, was cool. But I said, no, I got I to bring it to Arlington, you know. Yeah. And so uh, 
<laughs> her being the city uh, gal, you know, she's uh, originally, you know, from San Francisco. Um, she thought there was nothing out here. She was like, ah, Arlington, it'll never work, you know. And so uh, our grand opening day, uh, her jaw dropped. I mean, she was just like, I can't believe this. <laughs> I mean, we had a line going out the door. Um, you know, word gets out. You know, people talk. And um, we did bare minimum, like, any marketing or any type of, you know, I mean, just publicity, letting everyone know that we're doing a grand opening. Mm -hmm. And But like I said, you know, from that following. Yeah, you built up. Built up, yeah. you know, and from there it just popped. I mean, it just grew. Before you know it, we had uh, King Five Evening Magazine here. Mm -hmm. You know, they were, that. yeah, they were doing a full, full-on interview, and um, and yeah, I mean, the rest is, is history. You know. Yeah, it's crazy how quickly it became a, a part of Arlington. Yeah. You know, like there's the Arlington Hardware and the, yeah. the the movie theater maybe used to be. It feels like it just fit right in as soon as yeah it opened up, which yeah. is really cool. Yeah, um, I think a lot of that has to do with the culture. Of the of the city, yeah. Uh, the you know just um, everyone is just so welcome, you know. Yeah. 100%. Welcome, welcome spirit. You know, mm -hmm. everyone is um, just you know um, kind of have that like that, that southern down home feel out here, you know. Yeah. And so it's like you know once you become a part of this community, um, you know they're going to take you in and they're going to support you, you know, hundred percent. And so. Um, but yeah, it, it, it helped, um, you know, again, to, to, to already have that following mm -hmm. and to just, like I said, get everything going and, and uh, also having a great product. Right. You know, uh, we have a good bit of our clientele uh, has never tried kombucha ever. And so, you know, they're now kombucha fanatics and yeah. it, they don't drink anything else but our product. Yeah. You know, but, you know, to some extent they'll go to the grocery store and try another brand, you know, mm -hmm. just, just because, and they're always come end up coming back here. So yeah, no, every other kind I've had, cause I've had kombucha before, but I wasn't ever a, yeah. a big, you know, I mean, it's, it's all right. Yeah. But then after trying it here, it's like the apple pie. That's crazy. Yeah. It's, yeah. That's, that's a different thing than yeah. the ones that I usually see at the grocery store. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It, it, it took some time to perfect, um, you know, the, the first taste, um, it's still kombucha. Mm -hmm. uh, I tell people all the time, yeah, it still has that, that byproduct of vinegar. It okay. will it will eventually get there, but we've uh, been able to control that process. And so, uh, you know, it wasn't an overnight thing. It, it took time. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> yeah. So with it tasting so much better than every other kind, yeah. is there a like almost like a secret recipe you have, or is it just you're really careful with the measurements and that type of thing? No, we... We're just, um, we just have good taste buds. I yeah. mean, it's, you know, it's, you know, when you taste something, uh, especially like a strawberry or you want to taste an apple, mm -hmm. you want, that's what you want to taste. And so, um, you know, I've always thought about that. It's like, you know, if I'm going to create something, I want it to taste like what I'm creating, you know. Yeah. Um, is that easy? No. Mm -hmm. takes right. takes a lot of practice. And so... Um, you know, if there was any secrets or any type of different ingredient thing, I think we do the same process like any other kombucha right. company. It's just, um, again, you know, we may brew different, you know, Got it. but okay. it's but it's the same process. Got it. So from in your house to being here, yeah, you got a lot more equipment now. Yeah. I mean, maybe you had this in your garage. I actually don't know that, but mm -hmm. is it um, has it gotten easier or more streamlined? Because was it in a, is it in a jar with? Yeah, with we 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 started just doing the basic, you know, home brewing, which everyone starts in like a glass jar or something. Got it. Okay. Um, but yeah, everything we have is new. Uh, we've invested into the uh, commercial vessels. And so we're able to um, pump out uh, about 1,500 gallons a month, uh, which we haven't even really pushed that capacity yet. Whoa. We've had some times where we've almost gotten there, but not necessarily. And so, uh, and then we have backup vessels too that, that kind of incorporate um, with everything to where we can probably do a little bit more than 1,500, so. That's awesome. Yeah, there's the, it definitely seems like 
if this, if there is a ceiling, it's very high as far as what you can do with yeah. the business you've already yeah. grown right now. Yeah. I um, mean, kind of piggybacking off that, I'm always really interested in the mindset mm -hmm. of an entrepreneur yeah. compared to you know the normal nine to five because the majority of people are in sure. the nine to five and. Um, which is there's you know there's tons of great jobs but it's just a different schedule yeah. yeah do you think that you've always had that entrepreneurial cre you mentioned you've always been pretty creative and you would like to you like to um, create things yourself have, have you always had sort of an entrepreneurial uh, mindset or did you have to learn that based off of wanting to grow this kombucha um idea? it was it was uh, almost a natural occurrence um, I remember um, growing up, and basically always um, kind of having that creativity, mm -hmm. you know, of just making something um, or, you know, trying to sell it. Um, my skills over time in retail 